Hello, everyone. This is Vincent Pacillo, host of the MSU WMA podcast. We have another incredible episode for you today. We recently had Anthony O'Neill. Anthony is a number one national best-selling author, financial expert, and host of the popular online series, The Table with Anthony O'Neill. He has appeared on Good Morning America, The Tamron Hall Show, and Rachel Ray, among others. Since 2015, Anthony has served at Ramsey Solutions, where he teaches young adults how to budget, live without debt, avoid student loans, and build real wealth for the future. We talked a lot about those topics in today's conversation, along with so much more, and I really hope that you guys get a lot of, out of today's conversation. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to the MSU WMA podcast. I am here with Anthony O'Neill, but the fam know him as AO. So, Anthony, welcome to the podcast. Vincent, man, thank you so much for having me on. Looking forward to uh, the conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. So how did you um, become so knowledgeable and passionate about money? Man, my mistakes, bro. You know, um, uh, my knowledge came from, I would say, just back in high school, man, I racked up at about maybe not high school, but college age time frame. Um, I racked up about $35,000 in debt. I was about $15,000 in credit card bills, $10,000 in furniture bills, and about another $10,000 in um, uh, uh, student loans. Right. And so made a lot of mistakes. Unfortunately, I had to uh, drop out of school. And when I dropped out of school, I, um, because of the reason why I had to drop out of school, my father and I got into a real bad argument. And so, um, because of that argument, my pride, I ended up being homeless, $35,000 in debt by the age of 19. And so I walked through this whole money season of making bad choices and bad decisions and um, thought about committing suicide during that time frame, questioned all the people around me if they loved me. Um, and so when I got through that season, man, I told myself that I'm going to dive deep into one, getting myself out of debt and then learn more about finances so I could turn around and teach other people, specifically younger people, um, how to avoid the things that I've uh, that I've experienced. So some call me an expert like yourself, like like yourself, but first and foremost, man, I'm a student. I'm just passionate about uh, learning. Once I learn, I turn back around and I teach it. Um, I, I believe in wisdom and knowledge is the best tool we all can have. And so for me, it's about uh, number one, I'm a student. I'm learning every single day. And as I'm learning, I'm turning around and teaching it to all people, but I really have a heart and passion for uh, younger people. I love it. That's awesome. Um, so what habit, um, so kind of going off that you were talking about how, um, how like younger people is your crowd. And so what, what habit can college age students um, develop right now to build wealth, enhance their skills in personal finance? And why is that important to understand? Yeah, you know, my, my principle, man, when it comes to like, what can you learn? Like, what is one thing you should know as a young person is nothing deep. Check this mm-hmm. out. <laughs> uh, it's real simple. You know, just yeah. to really understand this principle that the caliber of your future will be determined by the choices you make today. Mm-hmm. If you're saying you want to build wealth down the road, what choices are you making today to build wealth? Are you going out there and buying all the latest and greatest technology, the latest and greatest iPhone, computer, uh, the nice Gucci bag, the nice Louis Vuitton purse, the nice pair and a recent pair of Jordans, the most expensive cars you can get? You know, Are you saying, you know what, I'll get one or two nice things, but I'm going to save more. I'm going to avoid debt. I'm going to invest more. I'm going to really make good decisions that over time, multiplied by compound interest, mm-hmm. uh, will build wealth, will bring me wealth. And so you really have to look at, you know, what decisions are you making with your friends? Can you tell your friends no? What decisions are you making with yourself? Can you tell yourself no? Can you delay gratification for your personal self? And so I think the deepest thing, which is not really deep, but one of the most important things that a young person can really uh, do today to build wealth, uh, to have to um, experience success, uh, to have a great relationship down the road, is make the right decision. Because if we make the right decision today, over time, it will bring us back good results. So the caliber of our future will be determined by the choices we made today. And if you're wondering, like, why did I end up here today? Well, go in the past and look at your decisions. Mm, No, I love that. Um, So yeah, many many students have come to believe that student loans are absolutely necessary uh, to get them through college. Why are they wrong? 
They're wrong because they listen to culture. They, they listen to the world, um, and they do not take enough time to actually go out there and do the research. Mm. Um, let's really break this thing down, man. Uh, Vincent, I want, and everyone listening right now, I really want you to think about this. When is the last time you walked into your doctor's office and you asked them for what uh, school they graduated from? When is the last time you maybe talked to a, your, your dentist and asked them, well, hey, where did you graduate from? When is the last time if you had an attorney, you asked your attorney, hey, where did you graduate from? Never. I think a lot of people associate um, schools with success. If I go to Harvard, if I go to Princeton, if I go to Yale, if I go to UCLA, if I go to the big, big, big name uh, school, I, I will be success. No, Let, let's, let's rewind. There are nearly 45 million people in America today who rack up about $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. Mm -hmm. 45 million Americans who rack up about $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. The average person would graduate with about thirty-five dollars to $38,000 in student loan debt. But a fifth of these young people who graduate from college will graduate with a mortgage payment but do not even have, check this out, real estate. Mm -hmm. So they're paying back two, three hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, but they have nothing really to show for it other than a piece of paper. Right. And so when I hear young people say, well, I got to take out a student loan so I can go to college. What you're saying is you have to hurt your future so you can be successful today. And I would rather you actually endure a little bit of pain up front so you can graduate debt free and, and walk into your future without worrying about your past. You don't have to go to into debt to go to college. You can start off at a community college if you have to start off at a community college. The average in-state school is going to cost you about $10,000 a year. That's going to be about $833 a month that you need to make if you stay in-state, live at home, eat at home. But there are ways you can do it. You see, when we take debt off of the table, when we take student loans off of the table, it forces us to now look at all of our options. And, and when we look at all these options, we start start seeing uh, better options that are better for our future. But right now, we just settle. If we don't get a full ride, we're okay with taking out student loans because the average person thinks if I take out student loans, I'm going to pay it back within three years once I graduate. But studies are showing that when you graduate college, the average income is going to be right around forty-eight dollars to $52,000, right? Mm, yeah. Now, the average person is paying their student loans back within 12 years years. Mm -hmm. But now let me go a little bit deeper for uh, some of your minority listeners. The average minority takes them about 20 to 24 years to pay back mm -hmm. their student loans. Mm -hmm. So no, I mean, when I hear people say that I have to take out student loans for college, no. What you have to do is step back and look at all your options and be honest with yourself. If you desire to be a um, carpenter, if you desire to be a hairstylist, you don't need to go to a four year university, go to trade school. Okay. Right. You go, Figure it out. One of my good friends and fellow uh, Ramsey personality is Ken Coleman is a career expert here. And he says this, just identify where you want to go. When you identify where you want to go, then look at what is the best route for you to get there. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, then yes, you have to go to school, right. but you don't have to go to a prestigious school because at the end of the day, Vincent, and I'll say this and, I, and I'll be quiet. I don't want to keep talking on your <laughs> podcast, uh, but I get passionate about this subject. Oh, yeah, no, um, yeah. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of people who went to prestigious schools, but they're not prestigious individuals. Mm -hmm. But then I know people who went into the military, who started off at a community college, who went to a trade school, graduated as a prestigious individual, mm -hmm. but they didn't go to a prestigious school. Right. What makes you is you. Are you a young man or woman of character? Are you a young man or woman uh, of integrity? Uh, are you willing to put in the work? Are you honest? Are you faithful? Um, are you willing to submit yourself to learn? If you're willing to do those kind of things, you will be prestigious. You will be the best in your career field. Um, and so, no, you don't have to go uh, into debt to um, to get a degree, to get education. Right. I believe education is important for all of us, but how we get it is the most important part. I, I love that. And you talk a lot about about in this book right here, like all these concepts that you covered. So if you guys want to read more about that, Debt Free Degree um, is a great book to read about that. Um, yeah. How do you maintain, like, like, like I watch you on the table. I'm watching you like on YouTube and on, and like, and all of your content. How do you maintain such a consistently positive state of mind? Like you're fired up, you're hungry. Like, 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 like talk me through that. 
And you know what? Um, you know, just to be transparent, man. You know, I'm not always fired up. I'm not mm -hmm. always um, uh, feeling good. But one thing I'm 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 teaching myself is um, the fact that I can wake up. Um, I need to be grateful. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that I get to do this every single day, I need to be grateful. There are some days you're watching me on the table. I'm laughing. I'm good on the outside, but inside I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. Inside I'm worried. Inside I'm concerned. But what keeps me motivated is my why, man. You know, mm -hmm. and what keeps me coming in and doing the table, what keeps me coming in and doing interviews like this, what keeps me coming in and doing the Ramsey show uh, when Dave is out of town, what keeps yeah. me coming in and, and and being here, even on days I just don't feel like it, even on days I, I am, I'm a little depressed on the inside, I'm a little, I'm a little off, you know, yeah. I'm human, but because I am a public figure, sometimes I got to snap it on and what, what gets me to snap it on, um, and I'm not perfect at it, you know, I'm not perfect right. at it, there's some right. days my right. team is like, what's wrong with this dude? Um, I'm human, but what keeps me going is my why. And my philosophy is if your why doesn't make you cry, then the price of commitment to become successful will make you cry. Yeah. And so for me, my why gets me out of my bed. Why My why pushes me. And my why is simply has nothing to do with you, Vincent. It has nothing to do with your listeners. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anyone in this building. My why is that, man, when I die, man, I want my family to say, man, this man loved God, he loved his family and he loved his community. Man. He loved serving people. Um, I want to see young people avoid debt. If they have debt, get out of debt. I want to see young people buying homes at 21, 22 years old. Yeah. I want to see young couples now starting uh, to get married and stay married with no infidelities. I want to see uh, young couples out here starting businesses. I want to see single people in their young ages becoming the number one rising entrepreneurs. Uh, I, I want to see us having true financial freedom and, and, and experiencing our dream cars and, exp and building our dream homes mm -hmm. because we're paying cash for it and, and we're creating a legacy for our last names. So for me, what keeps me motivated? What keeps me going? What what keeps me going when I don't feel like going um, is simply my why. And I want to encourage everyone, uh, get your why. What is your why? And if your why doesn't make you cry, you don't have a strong enough why. Mm -hmm. When that why gets you kind of emotional, when that why can get you fired up, when you don't feel like getting fired up, um, if 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 your why doesn't make you go to the gym on the days you don't feel like getting up and going to the gym, <laughs> yes. uh, then you don't have a why. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have a, a partial opinion of why you need to do something. Uh, but really, break down a why. And I promise you, on your rough days, it won't be easy, but it will be easier to keep mm -hmm. pushing. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. And anyone who's listening right now, feel free to pause and really like think about that for a second. Yeah. Because cause that's really, really like... It's important for like long-term goals and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, so going off of that, so what are the most, we were kind of talking about the table earlier. What are some of the most memorable conversations you've had from the table? Like, like stuff that you've really got out of it personally. Oh man. Um, one, of my, one of my most favorite table episodes was probably with my, my boy, uh, Pastor Brian Bullock out of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, who just recently moved to Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and he said something that shook me, man. Um, he said, Anthony, you know what? He said, Anthony, you know why I love what you do? I was like, why? He says, because Monday through Friday, people come here and they, they put in labor, they put in hard work. But then Friday through Sunday, they go give someone else the fruit of their labor. And he was like, and you're flipping that Monday through Friday, they're working, they're having, they're, they're, they're doing their labor, but Friday through Sunday, they're bringing the fruit of the labor back home. And when he said that, I was like, wow, I was like, wow, we do. We work Monday through Friday, get our paycheck on Friday, go out to the Gucci store, go out to the, um, you know, to, to the clubs, go out to the malls, go out to, you know, shopping centers, go out to Hawaii, go travel. So we give someone else the fruit of our labors and then come back home to our families and we're struggling. We're living paycheck to paycheck. We don't know how to pay our bills. We're racking up debt. We're swiping our credit cards. So it's like, man, and, and that shook me because that's really my passion right. is I know that somebody uh, will get the fruit, will get some fruit of my labor, but my family need to have the majority of my mm -hmm. fruit. And so when he said that, man, it shifted my whole spirit. I mean, that video is already about maybe 250,000 downloads on my, wow. on my YouTube. Um, and it's just, it's just crazy, crazy, man. <laughs> and then, um, and then another one of my tables, man, is, uh, my black history panel. I, yeah. I've done two of them. And, um, you know, it is, is, is real. 
it's wrong. One of, one of my slogans on the table is we're going to have a real, relevant, and relatable conversation. Um, and I specifically did the Black History panel uh, so one, I can have a conversation with my brothers and sisters, but then two, while we're having a conversation, I would love for other races to, to listen in and just listen to learn, not listen to respond, but listen to learn, uh, because I do believe that cultures are different. Uh, I said something just the other day, Vincent, um, uh, and, and uh, the white culture had to educate me on. I was like, oh, snaps, I didn't know. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? It was yeah, like, yeah. and how often do we do that on both sides? And right. so one of the main reasons why I did the, um, the Black History panel is just to give my followers, because I have a great, great, great um, size of uh, white individuals who follow me, and I love it. And I'm like, hey, I love you enough to where I want to give you a little bit of information into what my culture does. Uh, but then also I have a conversation with Dave and with Rachel here oftentimes, but hey, uh, is this right? Did I, did, I, did I say this right? Did I yeah. do this right? Is this coming off correctly? Yeah. Because here's the truth. It's not really about race. It's really about just cultures. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. for me, um, those are just two of the great things that I love with, with that panel. Um, and then also my friend, Pastor Brian Bullock, those things were really shifted me um, um, as far as in just some of my favorite conversations on the table. No, that's awesome. And, and for me, like listening to those, those panels that you have, it gives me a greater understanding because I want to understand. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you're right. It's, it's, it's a cultural, like, like we need to understand other people's cultures, see where they're coming from. And I just think that's yeah. a really cool perspective that you're bringing to people, like the, just really real and relevant conversations. And here's the thing, Vincent, like even for the people who are listening right now, you don't have to agree. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You just need to listen yeah. and just learn. Yeah. And, and you don't have to agree because I don't agree with a lot of things, even within my own culture, <laughs> you know, but I've learned to listen, to learn. And when I learn, I don't respond. I, I, I shut up and I yeah. just learn and I be watchful. Um, and, and the things that I don't agree on, I, I don't really respond on certain things because it, it doesn't really impact me personally. Um, and, and I think that's one thing that I, that I really loved about those panels. And I go out there and I watch other panels, you know, mm -hmm. um, just to learn. Uh, from other cultures and see what they're experiencing. Like uh, I just watched the Asian panel uh, just last week um, yeah. with everything that's going on with them recently. And I didn't know that they were experiencing some things and I'm just, okay, I'm learning. I'm taking it in. I'm, I'm, I'm being quiet. I'm being watchful. Um, and, um, and for me, I'm praying for uh, everyone throughout mm -hmm. this process. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. So um, what is the, biggest so kind of going off like we, we've been talking about success and yeah. what people can do for their success what's the biggest hurdle to one success or is there multiple elements um i would say the biggest hurdle of success is yourself man mm -hmm. you know i i think when it comes to me when i break it down for myself um i am my greatest enemy the greatest enemy to our success is our excuses mm -hmm. what's our excuse i i believe it is to remain comfortable um you know true story um i don't know if you listen to me on on how long you've been listening to me, but I did a show a while back and, and I opened up and I was very vulnerable. And I said, someone asked me, say, Anthony, how is it that you are able to experience it, experience this, the success that you have today? I said, it was because I was willing to leave my comfort zone. Mm. You know, before joining the Ramsey team here, man, I was a part of a uh, predominantly African-American black church, 99.9%. .9%, right. And I was like, yo, I'm good. I'm great. Um, but I realized that my message was much bigger than just one particular culture. Right. And I, for a while, I fought it. I was like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this culture because I don't know that culture. And they may not like me over there. And I was scared. I was, I was scared to be uncomfortable. I was scared to be in a place, in an atmosphere um, that I know will not accept some of the things that I say. They won't accept how I talk. Um, they won't accept sometimes how I look. They won't accept sometimes the way I even think. Uh, but then something on the inside of me said, hey, if you really want to experience success, nothing extraordinary happens within your comfort zone. You have mm -hmm. to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and be uncomfortable. And I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people in America are not willing to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They want to be comfortable. They don't want to be stretched. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't want to be um, uh, kind of, you know, criticized a little bit. They don't want right. to be corrected. Um, they want to be in their sweet spot, which is cool, which is great. But I think when you look at all of these successful people, um, all of them, um, are in their are in their uncomfort zone, and mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, the greatest enemy to our success is our excuse. What's your excuse? Yeah. Uh, are, are you know 
if you if your dream is to be an entrepreneur but you just want to work that's your excuse yeah yeah you know i mean that's that's fine just don't say you want to be an entrepreneur and and right. You know, don't say that. If you say, hey, I want to touch all people, but then all of your friends look like you, don't say you want to touch all people. Right. Um, you know, um, so that's my thoughts. Man, awesome. Um, so who are your heroes? Who are people who you look up to? Man, you know, I, I have two amazing fathers, man. I have two amazing, uh, bi- two fathers and two mothers, um, two biological parents and then two step parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and both of my fathers, I would definitely say are at the top of my hero list. Um, they've taught me pretty much how how to be a man, followed by my mother's. Um, you know, but outside of my, my father's and my mother's, man, um, I would definitely say uh, Dr. Tony Evans uh, from out of Dallas, te- Dallas Texas, um, is a huge, huge, huge influential guy within my life. Um, of course, when it comes to my finances, my mentor and dear friend and AKA boss, uh, yeah. Dave Ramsey, <laughs> uh, has been a huge hero um, in really shifting how I see money, how I mm. handle my money. Um, but I would definitely say those are those are two people right now that I listen to on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I wake up and listen to Dr. Tony Evans every single day from his sermons. Um, I study his sermons. Um, and then I listen to my mentor every day when I'm not on the show. I listen to the show to see how he's thinking and approaching money things. Yeah. So uh, my kids will be spiritually healthy and financially healthy uh, because of those two guys. Um, but then just the foundation of who I am, and I'm a family man. Mm. Um, and I'm just so grateful to see, um, you know, especially like my father, my biological father, who grew up in a very tough time. Um, and to see him still alive and to see him really giving me wisdom along my journey um, was just amazing. You know, I have 18 aunts and uncles, mm. uh, wow. and they were all sharecroppers. And um, just the wisdom that I that I get from them, I understand better my foundation. Right. And so today, uh, those are my heroes, man. Awesome. That's so awesome. Um, and kind of. Uh, sidetracking a little bit uh, we do have still have some time left um yeah you your channel you are always just pumping out great content when yeah. it comes to like success or like you, you, you used to do those little short clips too with like just like personal finance like skills and stuff like that so how can students looking to begin creating content start while in college and is it for everyone because like our, our student organization we're msuw may um, we're doing we're doing a podcast. We're doing um, a weekly newsletter. We're doing all of that kind of stuff. So, what are your thoughts on that? Man, that's a good question, man. You know, when it comes to content, one of the things that I tell people, I was just talking about this on uh, Clubhouse probably about a month ago. Um, you know, for me, how do I don't say this in a good way? Uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes to creating content, be the authentic you. Mm. Um, and have an authentic message. Yeah. Um, make sure no one puts nothing in your mouth. Um, make sure no one puts something in nothing in your heart. Um, if you're going to create content, if you're going to be a content king or queen, uh, make sure that it's coming from the authentic place inside of you. Make sure it's your message, your heart. And make sure you get wisdom and guidance along yeah. that journey. Uh, but make sure that you have something to say and you're not just a mouthpiece. Um, and I think when you are authentic to yourself, you'll touch more people, uh, you'll be more impactful, and we'll, we'll see the energy and the creativity and the passion right. behind it because it's yours. Right. And so I think, um, do I think everyone is, is called to create content? No, I don't. Um, but I think if you are called to create content, uh, make sure it's coming from a place that's within deep inside of yourself. And then that way, you know, your team, your, 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 your backing can add flavor to it, help you articulate it better, better, maybe help you write it better, right. uh, but it has to come from you. I love it. But I don't think everyone should be a content person. Uh, some people are called to be publicists. Some people are called to help you market it. Some people are called to help you edit it. Uh, if everyone was called to create content, then brother, we'll we'll be in trouble in America. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh man, no, no, that's no, that's amazing. Um, so earlier you asked about like financial habits, and yeah. um, but but in general, outside of finance, like I, I I'd like to close these podcasts. Um, with like just just general thoughts that you have for young people, college people like us who are about to graduate, we're about to start our lives. Um, so like, what are those good habits or those those things and your thoughts on that? 
You know, when I think of habits, man, I think of discipline, all right? Mm -hmm. And discipline is the bridge from where you are today, where you want to go tomorrow. What habits, AKA, I call them systems, are you doing in a daily practice uh, to get you to where you want to go? Are you waking up every single morning? Are you, you know, reading affirmations every single morning? Are you talking to yourself every morning? Do you have quiet time? Create habits that, that will create um, a bridge. Mm -hmm. So eventually you will go to where you want to go. For an example, um, I forgot, so I'm gonna put it in my ways in this video. So people just look at my hands. Like for an example, <laughs> habits is like, if you're going straight, let's say, right, you're going, these are two different lanes, right? Two different cars and you go straight habits eventually over a period of time, just veer off. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it go this way and go that way. Like, no, over a period of time, you will eventually see momentum. You will eventually see something change, but it happens day by day by day by day, right. by day. And I just, I would definitely say create healthy systems, AKA habits that over a period of time, you see a change. Um, I said this um, on Instagram and it went viral last year. I said, people will, will refuse to give and to change their financial habits uh, for 12 months because they refuse to be uncomfortable. So they'll mm -hmm. stay in their situation for 12 years. So rather than just saying, hey, I'm going to change my habits and do something different for 12 months so I can be financially free, so I can be out of debt, so I can avoid debt, they would rather stay in their mess for 12 years mm -hmm. because they're unwilling to create systems that change their future. They just want to stay comfortable at where they are. And so um, that's what I would say, bro, to that is wake up every single day, you know, spend some time and say, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to do this. Saturdays, Sundays, I may relax a little bit, but I'm still going to do this. Have systems in place that every single day when you wake up, um, you are creating a change for your future. Give yourself a solid 12 months, a solid year. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you will not be in the same place you are today. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of stuff to take in, but this is all really, really good stuff. Anthony, thank you so much for being on here. Really appreciate it. My brother, it. man, thank you so much for having me on. If you liked what you just heard, please like, comment, and share. MSU WMA, or Michigan State University Wealth Management Association, is a student organization part of the Eli Broad College of Business located in East Lansing, Michigan. Our mission is to inspire and educate the next generation of financial planners. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please check out our channel on all platforms such as Spotify and Apple Podcast, And check out our social media at MSUWMA and MSUWMA.com.